This story took place in Buena Vista, Virginia, in August of 2000. Well, I always wanted to write a scary story, but in the end, what happened was I experienced one in real life. Not scary like you would see on TV or read in books. This scary encounter happened to me and my sisters years ago, and I will never forget that night for as long as I live. We lived in Virginia near the mountains in what many people call the middle of nowhere. My family had moved there from Washington, D.C. when my dad relocated his job with an engineering company he had been working for for over 10 years. I'm the youngest of three with two older sisters. The three of us were enjoying summer vacation and spending time together by going ghost hunting and exploring abandoned houses in the countryside. Basically, we had been doing that every weekend for close to a year now. And as far as we knew, it did have some scary experiences, but nothing serious or dangerous ever happened until one fateful night. My sisters and I were sitting on an old porch of an old abandoned house, just chatting and enjoying the night. It was late in August, so it wasn't getting dark until around 9 o'clock at night, but anyway, the stars were in full force that night. Then, all at the same time, we heard something moving in the bushes off to the side of the porch where we were sitting. It was moving really fast and making weird sounds, so we all got up to investigate. We crept down the front steps, following the movements of whatever was rustling in the brush. It sounded big, at least as big as one of us, if not bigger. So we didn't want to get too close. Anyway, after our many years of exploring deserted places, my sisters and I had gotten pretty brave, but this did sound like something really big and fierce. So we stood there for a moment, debating whether or not to venture towards the bushes and try to see what it was. And then, as we stood there debating who would check it out, or even if any of us wanted to, it happened. This dog-like creature pounced out from behind the bushes, looking and sounding ferocious. It charged at us fast, its fangs bared and saliva dripping from its mouth. We tried to scream, but... By that time, it was too late. We'd run back onto the porch, and we were trapped there with the creature blocking our exit. I thought for sure that it was about to be the end of us, like we were racing against time, but either way, we definitely knew better than to run and to make it chase us. Anyway, it was not a dog or an animal as you would know one to look like. It had dog-like ears and fur, but it walked on two legs, like an upright dog. Weird and its arms were longer than most people's dogs are too, which made it a pretty strange dog by anyone's standards. And as for its face, well, that was really scary too. It had dog-like features, but also had fangs that stuck out like a dog might do if he was going to attack you. And its eyes were dog-like, but had a cold, scary look to them that dogs don't usually have, almost like it was mad at us or something. It came right up to us without a care or caution and then bolted towards my older sister and then retreated again just as quickly. It was almost like a warning, like it was telling us it didn't like something. Sort of like what a dog does when it wants you to get away from it. But this dog didn't leave. It just stood there off to the side, looking at us with those crazy eyes. And then it started to circle around us again, like moving back and forth across in the overgrowth just off the porch, growling and coming forward and backing up, basically keeping us terrified, not knowing if it was going to come at us or leave us alone. And that's when I got my first really good look at it. And I can describe it to this day because you never forget the first time you lay your eyes on one of these things. Imagine a dog, full-grown, but instead of fur, it's mostly hairless except for its neck and its head, and grayish skin and big, ugly-looking, bulging muscles, but it runs on two legs. It was like a werewolf, dogman-type thing, only less furry and more, well, doggish-looking, for a lack of a better word. 
My sisters and I held each other's hands as we watched it pace in front of us. After about 45 minutes with no sign of it leaving or harming us either way, we tried to go inside the house. And then when we did, it came at us so fast like a dog pouncing on you for food. But luckily we made it into the door just before it could get a hold of one of our arms or legs. Inside the old house, and hopefully out of danger from that dog bear-like creature, we locked ourselves in a room at the back and sat there the rest of the night just waiting for morning to come. None of us slept that night, and all I could think of was my mom and dad and how much trouble we were going to be in for not coming home. When the morning light started coming through the windows of the old house, we got brave again. Or at least I did. My sisters were still pretty shaken up by what had happened, and they were crying. I told them, stop it. We needed to get it together and get home before the dog man came back, or worse yet, came back with friends. We all went out to the front porch and looked around a little bit, getting our bearings for a moment. Luckily, it was nowhere in sight when we peeked around outside of the screen door, although I heard some howling off in the distance. At least it wasn't nearby. Scared as hell, as you might imagine, and just wanting to get out of there, we left quickly through the broken door, ran off the porch, and towards home. It was 6.30 in the morning when we finally got home, and our parents were awake and looking frantic. My mom burst into tears when she saw us, and Dad just started yelling and asking where we had been, and my oldest sister started telling the story, but it took her forever because she could barely get it out between sobbing. Dad then put all three of us in his truck and drove us back to where we had come from, back to the house. He said he wanted us to prove it. Meanwhile, we were all so terrified and begged him not to make us get out of the car. Dad just sat in the seat looking for any kind of weird creature or sign of one. The dog man had disappeared. Dad told us finally to get out of the car, but I remember my big sister saying she would do it for all of us but I watched her sob with every step she took towards the house, and then looking really afraid once they got to the porch. Dad went in first, opening up doors, looked under beds, any sort of hiding spaces he could think of to find the thing. And in the end, there was no sign of anything that would indicate a wild animal. Dad even checked around the perimeter of the house and declared to us that dogmen don't exist, and it was our fault for scaring each other. He said dogmen were not real, and we must have just seen a dog from the city or something. I'll never forget that day. My sisters and I were so scared, and we couldn't stop shaking, and in the end, they never did believe us about what we had seen. All I knew was that that dogman thing was real, and it is scary as hell. I'm grown up now, and I live in a city where dogmen are impossible for anyone to believe. But I still believe... And I still dream about the dog man. That dog man encounter will forever be stuck in my brain. I don't think I'll ever get rid of it. This story takes place in West Virginia in the early spring of 2009. I had just closed on my dream home in the mountains of West Virginia. For months, I had watched over my future property, and finally the land was mine, free and clear. It had a small cabin on it, but I had big plans to build a house on the small hill overlooking my favorite valley in the entire world. However, there was one strange thing that I wondered about. You see, two years prior, when I started the process to buy the property from the old man that lived there before me, He warned me that it was haunted by an ogre. I half wondered if the guy was a bit crazy or maybe going senile because he went on to tell me that at night while walking his dog, he would get an uneasy feeling every time he walked past a particular tree, as if something terrifying was going to leap from its shadow. He claimed and felt for certain that the terrifying thing would only attack him if he owned the property, so that's why he was selling it to me. Well, that sort of clinched it for me that he was a bit crazy, because why would anyone even say that to the person buying their property? His thoughts made very little sense to me, but I didn't want to offend an old man who was just trying to make a sale. 
so I assured him that whatever the thing was, it wouldn't bother me because I had long ago cast out all the demons of my life. That explanation seemed to put his mind at ease, and he never mentioned it to me again. However, it turns out that once I was living there, there were times when I too felt very uneasy on that piece of land. Sometimes, when I was walking alone and listening to nothing but silence and watching shadows, I also felt as if something terrifying was about to leap out from any corner at any second. Sometimes I would shake my head and tell myself that it was just some odd feeling and not to let the guy's comments get to my head, but other times I would jump at even the slightest movement and head back inside sooner than I had planned. Anyway, the first time I noticed anything strange about the property was only a few days after moving in. It was late in the evening and I was sitting out on the porch staring at the moon. The night was completely silent except for the occasional dog howling somewhere off in the distance. It seemed like such a peaceful place, but then when everything went quiet, I heard something rustling. Something coming up from behind me from around the side of the house. I turned around quickly to see what it was, but there wasn't anything there, just shadows. I got up to turn my body around and move to the edge of the porch. I could feel that something was close, but as soon as I got to the edge and looked out, the rustling stopped and everything got silent again. I decided it was nothing and headed inside and called it a night. For days afterwards, I swear I would hear bushes rustling behind me or just a scratching noise that seemed out of the ordinary. The truth is, I was starting to feel on edge, waiting for something to happen. And then, it finally did happen one night while I was sitting on the porch again late at night. Unfortunately, this time, something did leap from the shadows and scare the hell out of me. It's hard to even describe the thing that came out at me, but it looked like a dog. But its arms were way too long, and it had a human-like mouth with sharp fangs. It charged at me, coming at me on two legs, and I ran to the other side of the porch trying to get away from it. It chased after me and circled over to where I was standing, making this crazy noise the whole time while I screamed bloody murder into the night. It chased me again as I tried to get to the door, but I tripped over something and I fell hard on my face. Pain shot through my jaw and blood was pouring from a gash in my chin. I turned around to see if this dog-man creature followed me up onto the porch, but all I could see were its eyes searing into me. It just stood there watching me as I slowly got myself up off of the floor. I got up and ran to the door and threw myself inside. As I moved, I heard it growl in a way that sounded almost like a hissing noise. And then I saw it walk away, slowly back around the house and off into the shadows. Was it telling me to get out of its territory? I probably should have gotten out of there that night, but how could I? I had just made this huge down payment using my life savings on what I thought would be my dream home. So instead I decided to just stick it out and hope that I had dreamt it all. But the uneasiness never left me. Some days, when I stayed up late watching TV in the living room, I would hear something scratching outside the window next to the fireplace. Of course, I was convinced that it was out there and trying to break in. This went on for weeks until I finally decided that I wanted to do something about it. I had basically had enough of feeling stalked and terrified in the very place that was supposed to be my paradise and I wanted to put an end to it. So, I decided that that night I would sit out on the porch again and lure it to me. I sat there for a long time, waiting and listening. I didn't think that it was going to work, but then suddenly, there was the dog man standing in the grass watching me. There it was, showing itself to me, standing on two legs just like a man, only much, much larger and taller. When I saw it standing there, staring at me with those piercing yellow eyes, its fangs dripping with saliva, I wondered 
why in the hell I had wanted to encounter it again. And I also honestly wondered at that point if I had lost my mind. I don't know what came over me, but at that moment I felt without a doubt that it was going to kill me. After all, if it had been trying to get rid of me for weeks, what made me think that now was going to be any different? Well, I finally snapped, and I think that facing my fears is what saved me that night, because at that moment I found the courage to stand up to it. I took a deep breath and yelled, Okay, what the hell do you want from me? It's hard to describe the look that it gave me. Something like a smile, only much more sinister. It looked at me for a while and then turned around slowly and started walking into the woods. I don't even know if it understood me or just left. After a few moments of silence, which felt like hours, it responded back at me by growling in that hissing noise again. I didn't even see it that time. And after that, I never saw it or heard it again. I feel like I communicated with it that night. I really do. Maybe it came to understand that I won't bother it. I just wanted to enjoy the land too, just like it does. It probably felt that I was as much of a threat to it as it was to me, but at least now I feel like I can go on with my life in peace. I haven't seen the dog man again, and I hope I never do. But there have been times when I've been walking outside late at night and heard something that made me jump. But I think I'm just a bit on edge and that it probably wasn't anything to be afraid of. Or was it? It's just so hard because I just don't know 